Let's say you're going to a public restroom and you walk into the stall and you close the stall door. Now, why did you close the stall door? Are you trying to hide something? Are you trying to do something illegal? No, you're just trying to use the bathroom. Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. Everybody thinks that using a VPN makes you private and safe online. Bruh. And that's just not true. You see, the thing is, privacy is a fundamental human right. But if you were to ask big tech companies if that was true, they would say that privacy is a luxury. Privacy is not a luxury, it's a prerequisite for dignity. So in this video series, I'm going to teach you how you can achieve online privacy and anonymity. Uh, this series is going to cover a lot of ground. We're going to talk about metadata, we're going to talk about fingerprinting, we're going to talk about Tor, and today I'm going to talk about the tools that you can use to achieve privacy online. So with all of that being said, let's dig right in. Okay, so let's talk about the tools that you can use to remain anonymous online. And the first is a VPN. Now, I know, I just said that a VPN doesn't make you private, and it doesn't by itself. Now, combined with other techniques and tools, it can be an important part of your privacy purview. So let's talk about what a VPN is and how it benefits you. So when you browse the internet, your internet traffic goes from your computer to the website that you're browsing. Now, in between your computer and the website are internet service providers. Now, internet service providers log everything you do on the internet. So here's the thing, the connection from your computer to the server, that connection is encrypted. So the internet service providers can't see the contents of what you're sending to the server. However, they can see when you connected to the server, for how long, etc, etc. And so internet service providers can see all the websites that you go to, which is a pretty big privacy risk. Which brings us to VPNs. Now when you use a VPN, your connection goes from your computer and then over to the VPN server and then to the web server you're navigating to. What this means is that the connection from your computer to the VPN server, that's encrypted, meaning your internet service provider can't see who you're talking to. All they know is that you're sending encrypted traffic to a VPN server. And so you're effectively hiding your internet traffic from your ISP. Now, here's the thing. If you use a VPN and then log into your Facebook account, you've just lost the plot, right? Because if you're logging into Facebook, you're telling every website that uses Facebook's cookies who you are. Bruh. And at that point, there's literally no reason to be using a VPN. So keep in mind, your behavior while you're using the VPN is just as impactful as the VPN itself. Okay, and here's a great one, Linux. Linux is an excellent tool you can use to stay private. So here's the scenario. Mac OS and Windows, they send a lot of information about how you use your computer to Microsoft and Apple. Now, that's a problem, and if you want to see exactly what Microsoft knows about you from Windows, check out my video that I'll link somewhere, description on the screen, it'll be somewhere, in the comments even. You'll have to look for it, I'm not going to make it too easy. Anyway, uh, I have a video where I analyze the network traffic coming from Windows going to Microsoft, so that you can see exactly what it is Microsoft knows about you. Anyway, my point is, Windows collects a lot of information about everything you do and sends it to Microsoft, and macOS is no saint. It does a lot of the same stuff. And so if you want to remain private in your technology, then you should use Linux. The thing with Linux is that there's no company that controls Linux, right? It's a community project. Developers around the world all contribute to the code which is open source. Now that's important. Because the code is open source, you can rest assured that it is verifiable 
that there is no data collection going on. The thing about Linux is that almost no Linux distributions have telemetry, which is really powerful. It means that what you do on your computer stays on your computer. Okay, and for your web browser, I'm going to recommend LibreWolf. So LibreWolf is a fork of Firefox. It took the code that builds Firefox and it made something new with it. It's basically Firefox, but with a lot more security and privacy. So every time you close LibreWolf, it deletes your history and cookies. So every time you open it up again, it's like you're opening it for the first time. Now, some people may not like this because it means you have to log into everything, you know, manually every time that you open LibreWolf. However, I think that as a secondary web browser, as something that you just do your general web browsing on, it's a really good solution. And it also comes with the extension multi-account containers. Now, this is basically like having multiple copies of LibreWolf in the same window. So you can open different tabs that are color-coded. These tabs do not know about one another. The tabs that are two different colors have no knowledge of what's in the other one, meaning that you can compartmentalize your web browsing, which brings you yet another level of privacy. Okay, and here's another big one, Tor. Now, Tor should be used sparingly. It's best used in high-risk situations. Like, let's say you're a journalist in a hostile country, and you need to send your research back to your company that's based in, let's say, the U.S. Uh, so obviously, if you were to just send it over the internet, the ho that hostile country can see what you're doing. So what you do is you send it over Tor. Now, Tor, again, is not a magic bullet. If you're using Tor, and you log into your Facebook account, then there's no point in using Tor. However, I, I do want to break down the way Tor works. So like I said earlier, when you are connecting to a website, the connection goes from your computer to the website. Now with Tor, the way it works is your connection starts on your computer and then it goes to a Tor node. That node knows where your traffic came from, but it can't see the contents or destination of that traffic. It then gets passed to another node. Now this second node, the one in the middle, can see the node that the traffic came from, but it has no clue about where the traffic will go to after that. And then you have a third node, and the middle node sends your traffic to the third node, which sends it to the destination website. So now the third node knows where the traffic is going, the first node knows where it came from, and the middle node only knows about the two other nodes. So the idea here is that if one of the nodes is compromised, if one of the nodes is recording all of your traffic, then it's not going to be able to tell where the traffic came from or where it was going, uh, which makes it a lot safer than just a VPN. So here's the gotcha, here's the catch. If you're using Tor, your internet service provider can see that you're using Tor, which may not be what you want. Uh, a way around this, there's two ways around this. First is you can use a Tor bridge, which is basically like a, a temporary connection that you can use to get to Tor that makes it look like normal internet traffic to your ISP. Another option is to use a VPN on top of Tor. So a lot of people recommend against this, and the idea here is that there's such a thing as a correlation attack. Basically by recording when certain connections happen, you can effectively de-anonymize someone who's using a VPN and Tor at the same time. However, if you want to hide your Tor traffic from your ISP, then a VPN is still a good option in my opinion. So the best way to run Tor is through Tails OS. Tails OS is an amnesiac operating system. It lives on a thumb drive, and basically you have Tails on your thumb drive, you plug it into your computer, you turn on your computer, it starts up off the thumb drive, and then you have a way to access Tor. 
uh, this is great because it's amnesiac, meaning every time you turn off your computer, it forgets everything that you did on it. So it's literally starting over from a blank slate every time. And if you're trying to save, if you're trying to stay private, that's what you want. So Tails, really powerful solution, gets you on tour and uh, gives you what you need. Now, I will say a big disclaimer here. There's a lot of illegal stuff on tour and depending on where you live, it may be illegal to even use Tor, so I'm not encouraging you to break any laws. I don't think that you should be breaking any laws that doing anything I say in this video. Uh, but also, it can be illegal to view certain material that exists on the dark web. Uh, so basically, be very careful when you're browsing the dark web because you do not want to do something illegal. Okay, so that brings us to encryption. So the tool I recommend for encryption is called Veracrypt. It is really powerful and it allows you to do some really cool stuff. So Veracrypt has this feature where it can create a hidden encrypted container. The way this works is that Veracrypt creates a folder that's encrypted and there are two encrypted containers in this folder. The first one is your benign, safe to share one. Basically, you put files in there that look sensitive but don't actually contain the secrets you're trying to hide. And that is unlocked with one password. Now, it also creates a second encrypted container in that file that's hidden behind the first one. And there's a second password that you can use to get into the hidden folder. The idea here is that if someone has a gun to your head and they're telling you to unlock your encrypted container, you can give them the first password and from their perspective that will show everything that's there. In reality, you have your second password which gets you to the real hidden material. So it's a duress, it's a duress uh, solution. And then let's talk about Cubes OS. Cubes OS is great for the ultra paranoid. It's basically Linux on steroids. So the way Ver, Ver, the way Cubes OS works is uh, it puts everything in a virtual machine. It's a type one hypervisor as a desktop. So basically uh, everything that makes up the system is split up into different uh, virtual machines. So like you have one virtual machine for your desktop. You have another virtual machine for networking. You have another virtual machine for the firewall. You have another virtual machine for USB devices. You have a throwaway amnesiac virtual machine for browsing the dark web. Uh, you have a personal usage virtual machine. You have a work usage virtual machine. It keeps all of these things compartmentalized from one another. And the whole idea with Cubes OS is that it assumes that you're going to get hacked it operates assuming that your, that your virtual machines are going to be compromised. But because it compartmentalizes everything, the blast radius of that compromise is much smaller than it would be otherwise. I could go on about Cubes OS for a long time, so I'm gonna cut it short there. If you wanna see a dedicated video about Cubes OS, let me know in the comments down below. And I just wanna say, if you're enjoying this video, consider subscribing and liking the video even if you really liked it. Uh, subscribing lets me know that you want to see more videos like this and it'll help me know if I need to prioritize this series. Okay, and finally, why should you care? Well, here's the thing. Privacy is a fundamental human right, but privacy is also a prerequisite for dignity. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say you're going to a public restroom and you walk into the stall and you close the stall door. Now, why did you close the stall door? Are you trying to hide something? Are you trying to do something illegal? No, you're just trying to use the bathroom. But the thing is, you don't leave the stall door open. And again, you're not trying to hide anything. It's just that closing the stall door gives you some dignity while you're using the bathroom. Uh, so that's my whole point here. It is not about trying to hide illegal activity. It's about preserving your dignity when it comes to sensitive information. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that governments change over time. Different people come into power over time. And you may agree with the people in power today. However, you may not agree with the people in power tomorrow. Something that's totally legal and okay today may be considered taboo and illegal tomorrow. And that means that you need to do your due diligence in protecting yourself. And so, again, you may agree with today's government, but you might not agree with tomorrow's. And that's one thing that makes privacy so important. Okay, and that's all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.